So is it possible to have AI learn you how to use GraphQL? At Stepsend, we've released a new feature in the Stepsend dashboard, which we call Ask AI. It means we've embedded AI capabilities directly inside the Explorer. And this is where we have your schema, where you write your operations, such as queries, mutations, or subscriptions, and basically where you try and explore your GraphQL APIs. This functionality works with APIs created with Stepsend, but also with any other GraphQL API that you try to use from the Stepsend dashboard. Before showing you this new capability built into the Stepsend dashboard, uh, I also like to show you the Stepsend IBM product page. So if you would go to this link, you'll be able to find out uh, more around what we're doing at Stepsend. And even this new AI capability is developed using a product called Watson. So we used Watson to get AI capabilities using all the cool LLMs that are available. And Watson makes it really easy for us and probably also for you. Let's try out some AI capabilities in the steps and dashboard. I take one of my endpoints, which is called with JSON placeholder. So I know that this GraphQL endpoint has information on all sorts of things. If I would go to the documentation or the schema for this endpoint, I can see I can get albums, album photos, uh, a list of posts, uh, user information, all these sort of things. Of course, I can start and write my own GraphQL queries. So I can start typing that I want to get a list of posts and then for a post, I maybe want to have information like, like a title and the user ID of the author. I can also use this feature, which is called Ask AI. I can also start typing here. So give me all the posts and their ID and title. So it's a simple question. Again, I can look at the schema and then start to type it myself, but I can also just use this feature that says Ask AI and just write this simple prompt, give me all the posts and their title and ID. Once I press ask, what will happen is we'll look for uh, your query. We're gonna look for all the information in it, and then we're gonna try and return you uh, this data. Um, as you can see the results here, the answer is a bit fake, but if we look at the details it generated, it actually generated a query for us says, this is the number of posts, this is the query to get posts. We have ID and title, and once we run it, you can see we get a list of all the posts. I can also ask, what is the title of post with ID one? Let me type this, what is the title of post with ID one? And probably your answer will be a bit more normal here because we basically asked it to give us all the posts and their ID and title. So the results will be too long to display here. Instead, we get the query and we can see the results right here um, in our graphical explorer. Once I run this query, I probably get a more concrete answer saying what the title is of post with ID 1. And as you can see, the title of post with ID 1 is this one. And as you can see, it's just a simple GraphQL API that's using some mock capabilities. Um, so it's more of a lorem ipsum answer you get. Again, I can see the query and I can see the answer here. So this is really helping me in getting more information around what's going on. Even if we look in here, you can see it's doing some smart things like renaming my query. My query is called post. It's actually taking the query called post and renaming it to post one, because specifically asked for post with ID one. You can also see it's capable of writing variables for me. Um, the variables don't have the nicest name, it says for one, but still it's a good start. It's capable of more things. And in order to show you, I'm going to open up another GraphQL endpoint that has a slightly different schema. If you want to try this endpoint yourself, you can go to our GitHub repository that has an example, which is called with the JSON placeholder. You can deploy the schema for yourself, go to the steps and dashboard and use the SKI function. Uh, so let me go to the different endpoints. Besides using endpoints linked to your own account, you can also use public endpoints right here in the Explorer. Uh, again, the first time you open this endpoint, it will try and create a basic query for you. So we're just gonna get rid of this and press clear. 
And let's have a look at the schema. We're already using the SDKI function, so we can close this pop-up. Uh, as you can see, it has a number of things. It has some queries to get the weather by city, uh, weather by latitude, longitude, uh, geocode. So let's try and ask this. So let's try and ask a couple of questions based on the information in the SQL schema. So let me ask, what is the weather like in San Francisco, which is where I'll be next week? So we're going to press ask. Um, SKI is going to do a couple of things. It's going to take this query, translate it. It's going to take this prompt, translate it into something that's usable by the API, and then going to show you the result. So it's going to return me. It's 58 is the temperature in San Francisco. It returns the query. The query is, let me prettify this. The query is getting the temperature. And again, I can then start adding things myself from here. I can also do something else. I can also ask, what is the current weather? And check if it will be able to figure out where I'm based now and return the weather based on where I currently am. So what's the current weather? The current temperature is 81 Fahrenheit. And now let's see if it's able to figure out where I am. It says New York, I'm actually not a New York, um, but I am in Amsterdam. So let's see if I change this to Amsterdam, what my results will be. The temperature is pretty similar actually, which, well, it's pretty good to know. As you can see in this video, there are some cool things we can do using SKI. If you're already familiar with using GraphQL, uh, you're probably able to figure out how to do certain things by going to the docs tab and look at the GraphQL schema. But quite often you're not really sure what the schema is look what the schema looks like, how to construct a query, maybe there are some trade-offs in the API that you're not aware of, and this SKI feature is really helping you to get rid of these small things. So in this video, we looked at the SKI functionality in the steps and dashboard which means you can now use an embedded AI directly from the place where you're also typing GraphQL queries, mutations, and subscriptions for your endpoints. I hope this will really help you in streamlining the way you interact with GraphQL APIs designed using StepSet. And of course, you can also use it for public endpoints or endpoints that you created with a different framework or tool. Make sure to follow StepSet on social media by going to Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, have a look at our new IBM product page where you can find the latest information on StepSet.